and welcome to this week's angling vlog. This week you join me on the banks of the River Severn and we're in search of barbel and chub. So on the channel I normally put the videos out as I've filmed them but this week I decided to break that trend and bring this session to you as soon as possible. It was a session that I recorded last Sunday when I went through to the River Severn in an afternoon and boy was it worth it. I hope you enjoy the session on the video to come. Before we get into this week's vlog, I'd just like to thank everybody that left such nice comments on last week's video. Sometimes when you go out of your comfort zone, it really can be hard. And lure fishing has been one of them things that I've been putting off for far too long. Sometimes you've just got to bite the bullet and go for it. And that's exactly what I did on that session. And boy was I made up I did it. It's given me the confidence to want to try it again. So keep an eye on the channel in the weeks to come. I'm sure you're going to see some more lure fishing on the channel and you'll see me learning as I go along. Of course, if you've got any hints or tips that you want to leave regarding lure fishing, pop them in the comments below. I read all the comments and try and reply to all of them. So while we're talking about comments on videos, I just want to say thank you to everybody that's been so supportive about the upcoming trip to France. As you're watching this video now, I should have been halfway across the English Channel on the ferry to France. So as we all know, the wheels around COVID are constantly changing from day to day, hour to hour, and week to week. Over the past couple of weeks, we've made many changes to our plans for France. We was planning to stay in Calais overnight on the Friday. We decided not to do that and drive straight from England to the lake from the Friday to the Saturday. We decided to take all the food that we needed for the week with us. Um, we made a pledge not to leave the lake at all while we were there. Just trying to reduce that risk of COVID on any part of the journey. Up until Monday this week, we were going and I was looking forward to the trip. But sadly, a local lockdown in my area, where I live, has put pay to the trip completely. The local lockdown has meant that you are not allowed to visit another household in the butter. With both myself and Mark living in the same butter, it was impossible for us to both share a van and go to France. So what it means is we've got a holiday that's fully booked, fully paid for, we paid for the van and the crossing and all being well, the whole world will be in a much safer place at this time next year. The upside of that is I've still got next week off work when I'm planning to get out in search of barbel, pike, roach, dace and anything that swims. So if you don't already follow me on Facebook and Instagram, there's a link in the comments below. Go over there and check out what's happening and you'll see what I'm getting up to this week when I'm not in France. So while we're on the subject of COVID, there are a number of people who watch the vlog who have commented that it is affecting their lives at the moment. And I just want to wish all them people a speedy recovery to them and their families. I hope you all stay safe and well. With that bit of bad news out of the way, let's move on to a bit of positivity. Let's get ourselves ready for the weekend with a bit of fishing. I hope you enjoy this week's vlog. If you do, it'd be great if you can like and subscribe and share the video. Stay safe. I hope you enjoy the video. And I'll catch us all next week. Well, first cast, literally sorting stuff out and the rods hooped over. I've said before, when you start like this, it only gets worse normally. <laughs> I would think it's going to be a chub, because it has come over the river quite quickly. Let me get a look at him. It is a chub, and that's an excellent start. Always good to get a fish on your first cast. But like I always say, sometimes it can be a curse. Hello and welcome to this week's angling vlog. Today you join me on the banks of the River Severn and what a start. The rod absolutely screamed off. Put a bit of hemp in to start with. First cast over the top. This four pound, eight ounce chub. And if catching four pound chub was a hobby, 
I'd be very good at it, wouldn't I, this year? They've had a lot of four pound chub. Sometimes this can be the kiss of death. If you get a fish first cast, it doesn't always bode well for the rest of the session. But well worth the effort coming down to the seven today for the afternoon. Straight down into the snags. Let's see if we can see him. There he goes. What a start. Looking at the swim, we've got shallow water downstream and moves into slightly deeper water. And that is the type of area that I will target when the river is really clear like today and low. I imagine them barbel are maybe in them snags, downstream in them rapids. Certainly you should be able to draw some along that cover. It's dark water you know shaded for the time being i've got one rod in line with that reflection and i've put hemp over the top of that quite heavily and the far bank we're just casting as close as we can to the tree probably about five or ten yards off it trying to draw any fish out there is a snag round about here so you've got to be careful normally i would be trying to aim for that slack water above the tree and let it bounce down but there is a bad snag there and you you know i've lost gear before on it and not about to make the same mistake so that's the swim we've had that chub and hopefully hopefully we can get a barbel it's a beautiful day to be on the bank we really are in the last days of summer into autumn and soon It'll be pike, chub, dace and roach. So we're just into the first proper bite of the day and it's almost certainly a barbel. I'm gonna pass it round the rod. Just plodding from weed bed to weed bed at the moment. It'll probably make a fool out of me in a minute and probably be a chub, but I very much doubt it. <laughs> very much doubt it. So with that barbel resting in the edge, going to give it plenty of time, but that doesn't mean that I can't bait up the swim, you know, while I'm waiting. Prime that swim, keep any fish that might be there in the swim. Well, if ever the trip was worthwhile, it was today. That four pound chub, and with the sun still up, the rod has absolutely screamed off. For this nine pound two ounce barbel a proper scrap went for that snag most definitely arm was aching all the way through the fight but what a beautiful fish that is and just shows when you sat at home thinking should you come through the answer should always be yes well worth the hour and a bit drive and you've got to think the best is still to come Thank you very much, girl. You've made me a very, very happy angler. Let's get it straight back. As I always say, when you've got a barbel on the bank, concentrate on the one that's in the net. You know, give them all your attention. Get the rods in. He's been down there for a while now. Well rested. Time to go back. So the rods that I'm going with today are the Corum. Excalibur rods, 1.75 pound test curve. I get lots of questions on these rods, and like I always say on the channel, I let the fishing, you know, speak for itself. And you guys each week get to see them in action. You see what they can do, what they can cast, what they can catch, etc. 
I think Mr. Chubb has just found the bait. So I'm teaming them up with the Corbin Shadow Reels with 12 pound line. You can see there, got the rods nice and high, keeping that line off the water. And we'll take a look now at the business end. So I've just been trying to record a piece of camera on the rigs and the far bank rod has just gone I don't think it's a barbel almost certainly going to be Mr Chubb and there we go another nice one as well so to the business end I've got a Corum Bolton run kit behind which I've got a quick change swivel I've got a sleeve to aid separation on the cast in the feeder I've got the Hinders Barbel Bond ground bait, the Hinders Ellipse small pellets, a bit of hemp, and I've just plugged that both sides with the ground bait. So how does the bottom run kit work? Well, what it means is you've got like a nodule there on the clip. And what it means is you can have the choice to have it free running like that, or you can push it over that nodule and it becomes the bolt rig effect. So what I'll do is I'll have it like that when I cast in, so I'm getting the bolt effect. But what makes it safe, you know, if you cracked off or snapped above here, then that becomes free and the barbel isn't, you know, tethered to the feeder. That's down to a £10 fluorocarbon hook link, a size 12, Corbin grappler hook and a 10mm or an 8mm pellet. And you'll notice I've got it really tight to the hook. Now... A lot of people want to avoid the chub so they'll have a longer hair so it sticks out so the chub can't get hooked but as you've seen for me i'm not fussy i want to catch chub i want to catch barbel and if there's big roach about i want to catch them as well so as you can see there that is as tight to the shank as i can get it so that's the setup as you've just seen i've been rudely interrupted so what i'll do is we'll take a look at that chub now so second chub of the session almost um put it on the scales and it went four pound eight ounces but it's the same chub as before most definitely it's got the markings above it's thin and i don't know if you can see it on camera but it's got like a ridge on its back round about here it's got like a lump on its back so it most definitely is the same chub one greedy chub so good to see an old friend again but I hadn't hoped on seeing him till winter when he was over five. Let's get this greedy, greedy chub straight back. As with most weeks, there's plenty of questions that come in on the channel and I try and answer every single one of them. And if I can't answer them, what I try and do is include it in a future vlog if it's easier just to show. This week was contacted and asked what exactly do I carry on the bank when I go for barbel. The main thing that I do is take the minimum amount of tackle that you can carry. You don't want to be lugging loads of gear. I very rarely bring a chair with me, preferring just to sit on the bank. I might bring a brolly, but I always look at the weather. But they are the three main things that I carry. A rucksack, a bucket, which normally has the hemp in, and the ground bait, and me hold all. That is the transition three rod quiver, for anyone who's interested. It carries three rods, my uh, bank stick, and there's a compartment in the side of it which I normally put a few bits and pieces in, a drink, my brolly, and my bank sticks. What I've done there is I've literally just opened up all the compartments to make this bit easier. So in the main compartment, I carry my EVA riddle. In there, I've always got my ground bait. Obviously, this is made up because we're fishing. And in the bucket, I've got my pellets. That's the ground bait made up. Some baits that I would use probably if there was colour in the river or when I'm going into evening. But they store nicely in that. And this one. And these are fantastic if you want to carry electrical stuff because they are waterproof. In the top I've got my batteries for my head torch. And in there I've got all my things for vlogging. Got my head torch, a power bank, uh, a light, I've got a selfie 
like behind it just for filming keeping everything electrical dry in this i did used to carry a two pint tub with all my hook baits in if i'm gonna fish like today with a banded pellet but you're carrying hundreds of pellets for no reason you're never going to get through a pint of hook bait so i'll leave the other pint at home and just carry that one and at the end of the day i've got enough hook baits there to probably last me a season no need to carry the other pint for nothing we've seen this before on the vlog it's my tackle box and in there got all my bits and pieces that i need for my barbel looking in the side compartment i've got my ledgers split into two so in that one i've got my four and five ounce leads and they said they just fit in the the corner the pockets are made to pint regulation so each one of these boxes is a pint in size so the, the actual hold all is made so they fit in and they're my i think they're actually my three ounce feeders them but separated nicely and then we come to this corner got a packet of the ellipse hard dumbbells the one bit of item that you never should forget a waistling and your scales always important hopefully that answers the question as you can see everything away all nice and compact and nothing in there that you don't need you've got a bit of extra storage if you need it if you want to carry like me tripod in there but hopefully that answers the question that's coming and i'll look at what the gear that i carry to the bank the trip through was well worthwhile it's turned into a bit of a red letter session just about to do a bit to camera to say that i got here about quarter past two and a bait in the water probably about i would say say three o'clock it's just coming up now to quarter past six and between getting all the questions done that people have asked in the week and doing the rigs and stuff like that and sorting the fish out it's proving <laughs> a bit of a red letter session it's another chub let's hope he's not the same one in fact i know he's not he's certainly a lot smaller and it's quarter past six now and the rod's literally been in the water five minutes and it's gone again slightly smaller probably three pound maybe but let's get it straight back So like a lot of people in the country, at the moment I'm working from home, but it's still work isn't it? So I'm just going to enjoy the last embers of this beautiful autumn end of summer day. It's a beautiful time to be on the bank and I'm going to make the most of it. So like I was saying, it's been an absolutely manic session. That rod been in probably 10 minutes if that. And after two chub, we're almost certainly into a barbel. It's most certainly a snag or a weed bed mid river because every one of them including the chub have had me in it i don't know how many more barbel sessions we've got left of the season hopefully we've got time for one or two more as you've probably seen on the channel been a lot of barbel fishing and i've thoroughly enjoyed targeting 
these fish they really are great fun and this isn't the biggest barbel in the world but you can just see the scrap that they give you and if you've never fished for them just go and give it a go so if you've never given barbel fishing a go definitely go out and give it a go the tactics are simple as you've seen in this video but it's loads of fun even the small ones like this one pull the tear line off the reel and a great fun pristine condition and a pleasure to catch let's get this beautiful fish straight back so finally you can sit down with a drink of water <laughs> been having sips all the way through it has been a bit manic but great fun i've really really enjoyed today and was fighting those demons at dinner time thinking or oh, can i be bothered driving down but i'm sat here now so glad that i did you know so many times we talk ourselves out of it don't we you know we sit there and think oh i can't be bothered or i'll go tomorrow and when tomorrow comes it's probably raining but today i decided to and i'm so glad that i did And this does feel like quite weird it's more of a jagged like it could be foul hooked it's a weird fight and it is a barbel just seeing its door something i think barbel number three of the session and we are coming to the end of it now i'm not gonna give it too long into dark the third barbel and it's just been a beautiful evening by the bank you know they give frost at the end of next week so that'll probably push these guys on to feed even harder when they feel that bite of autumn coming but it's been a really enjoyable day on the bank couldn't have asked for any more it's been a good enjoyable session so i was just about to recast the outside rod and the left hand rod has just moved off but as you can see how cold it's getting you can see me breath it's probably going to be the last fish of the session i think might have one more cast so the second chub of the day over four pound just over at four one and boy would i like to meet these on the stick float it'd be great fun definitely have to come back in winter to see if these guys hang about the last 20 minutes of the session and then we'll be calling it a night been great fun let's get this chub straight back so walking back to the car you can see the ground white with the dew and that temperature really did drop i hope you've enjoyed this week's vlog tight lines in your own fishing and i'll catch us all next week